This tutorial is part two of the parametric steel stud wall. In this tutorial we're going to cover how to actually set up the stud wall array so as you stretch the wall up and down uh, it'll actually add studs that you can calculate into a schedule and count. Uh, if you haven't checked out part one I would go to my channel and find that. I go over the basics of how to bring these studs and tracks in and how to attach them to the reference planes which you can see on the exterior side here so you can see how they're attached properly so that way they array or stretch so in this tutorial we're gonna cover how to actually set up the array so it goes from left to right and then it uh, doesn't because the way that this kind of works in this curtain wall panel family is and I mentioned this in the last video is it likes to stretch from the center uh, and the way that we can kind of counteract that is what we're going to do is we're going to set up a reference plane here and then we're going to reference the array from that portion onwards so that we're going to get started with that so we're going to take this reference plane here we're going to create one here on the left side and then we're going to add a dimension string and we're going to name this dimension string give it a parameter we're going to name it first stud uh, and then we're going to leave it as a type so this is going to give us a reference point for when we actually start to insert some studs and array them. Uh, so we're going to make this one, because it's a parameter now, we can just change it here. So we're going to make this 16 inches. And then we're going to go to our reference plane, our reference level. And then we're going to go to the Create tab. And we're going to use the Component tool again. And we're going to place another stud on the work plane. Now you'll notice that it actually it considers exterior as the uh, the front side so it's a little bit confusing just remember that even though we're going from left to right technically it it looks like it's going from right to left just be aware of that. So we're gonna hit the shift bar a couple times and then we're going to just place this on the work plane. We're going to do the same thing we did with the last one. We're going to align these and lock them. And then we're going to go back to the exterior side and take a look. So this is a lot like the last one where we're going to select the stud. We're going to go to the length. And then we're going to give this the panel height parameter. There you go. So we'll just flex this a little bit just to make sure that it connects properly and then it's just as a good rule of thumb it's always good to name these uh, reference planes because you never know when you might need them so we'll just name this uh, first stud there you go so that's the step one now step two we're going to go back to sorry we can do this actually from here we're going to select this we're going to go to the array function here under structural framing modify array and then it's going to be as simple as selecting the middle here going here and then going 16 inches easy enough so that's step one in this so the, what we're going to do now is we're going to identify what our stud spacing is and then we're going to identify the number of studs needed and then we're going to push a calculation to here so uh, we're going to start by going to our family type it's up here we're going to add a parameter and call it just call it stud spacing so it's pretty clear what it is uh, we want this to be a type because eventually what we want to do is we want to set up uh, stud wall types that are 16 inches 24 inches so that way we can just switch the type we don't have to manually do that every time uh, it's going to be a length and this is fine so we're going to go okay we're going to specify this as 16 inches 
and this isn't reference and referencing anything either so once we actually get into it uh, we're gonna just use this as a general uh, a general number for calculating uh, another point here is make sure that you're not using first stud and stud spacing as the same because you want to have that flexibility uh, for each family I guess uh, because sometimes uh, you know you want to start the stud a few only a few inches away instead of having it starting you know exactly 16 inches so we're actually going to edit this we're gonna actually make this an instance uh, that's my fault I should have mentioned that before it's better to have this as something flexible we'll just keep the default as 16 so we're gonna hit apply hit OK and then we're gonna select this sorry we're going to take the align uh, dimension we're going to select the reference plane and then we're going to select the center of that stud we're going to select the dimension string and we're going to use that stud spacing so what's kind of nice is the one thing that Revit is really smart about is if I put three here I want three arrays it recognizes the spacing of each one so if you specify this as a 24 inch Orange, not there you go. See, it recognizes that. And what's nice about that is we can actually take that dimension, we can do a calculation, and we can send it to this here. So it will always, it'll take the distance, and then it'll make however many uh, number of studs it needs. So we're going to go up to our properties again. Uh, we're going to go to add parameter. We're going to make one, we're going to call it uh, number of studs. It's not going to be a length, it's going to be an integer. And we're going to put this under, usually I put it under construction. Uh, this is going to be an instance as well, because it, it's going to change based on the length of the wall. So we can hit OK. So there's our number of studs. So we're going to write a calculation here. It's pretty simple. Uh, we're just going to do the. Uh, oh, I forgot that there's something else we have to do here. We actually need a uh, report parameter for this length. So we're going to take the align tool here. We're going to do what we did for this one. We're just going to select it make a new parameter call it panel length make it as a instance and then report parameter and it can go under dimension that's okay and then we're going to go back to our type families we're going to now we're going to do our calculation here so it's a pretty simple calculation it's just panel length divided by the stud space stud spacing we're going to hit we'll just click out of it so it recognizes that you need exactly four studs now you're going to see how this kind of is not exactly completely logical so hit ok we're going to have to select this the array select this and then we're going to give it a label which is this so you see how it added this extra stud here so one way that we can get away with this is first of all we're starting the array from 16 inches or whatever this first stud is so we need to factor that in so we're going to take panel length and we're actually going to create some parentheses here we're going to subtract the first stud. So you'll see that kind of fixed it. Uh, and then now it's going to still kind of get confused because you're going to see sometimes it it will it it depends on whether it rounds up or down when it does the stud array. 
So one way that you can kind of get away with this is, unfortunately, it's kind of a manual process. We're going to create another parameter here, and we're going to call it uh, additional stud. This one's also going to be an integer, and it will also be an instance. We'll put this under construction as well. Okay, and then we can, you know, change this to whatever number we want, up or down. We can have negatives, positives, because in some cases it will actually add too many studs, in which case you want to be able to subtract them. Uh, and, the, and the way we get away with this is we're going to put all of this into parentheses. calculation in for additional stud and then hit apply okay I'm just going to stretch that out so you guys can see the full thing So this, because these are instances, these will show up when you select the wall. So if you're drawing all your walls and then you want to see, you're like, oh, this one's missing a stud. You can just look on the properties panel when you select the panel and it'll have this number available. And you can just toggle it like we did here. So you can add one, take away one, whatever you want to do. Okay, so that's the basics. So we'll go into 3D just to take a look. Looks like it works fine. We're going to go to the exterior side again, and we're going to just flex this just to see how it operates. When you actually draw this, this doesn't happen. This only happens for some reason in the actual family. Okay. And then you can change this too. These are all the reason they're flexing like this is because they're technically instance parameters. So when you're messing around with the with it inside the family, it, it gets confused. But it'll actually lock these numbers when you place it in the project. So stretch this just to see how it looks. See it sends that parameter to all of these just because you sent it to the one parameter used in the array. So re remember that when you're doing arrays, whatever parameters you attach to this first stud in the array will send all the parameters to each one of these. So, uh, and later on you'll see in the tutorial I'm going to start adding um, labels. So, uh, and I'll kind of explain that more in detail, but basically it allows you while you're in the project to change between different types of studs which is really nice because then you don't have to create you know seven or eight different you know stud wall types you can just create one and then have all the types inside that one family instead of having a bunch of different families so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial um, I'll leave a like subscribe all that fun stuff and I'll see you guys in the next video